Hey y'all, welcome to today's 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. I thought I would switch it up a little bit today. I have a bunch of live trainings that I am doing for my clients today. So I thought it'd be fun to kind of give a little sneak uh, peek at what that can be like for our tips today. Um, as usual though, please, please keep in mind uh, that on 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday, these tips are for education purposes only. If anything that I do uh, reminds you of someone who you think might need to be seen by a doctor or a nurse, a therapist, um, another licensed medical provider, then please, please make sure that that person is seen by the appropriate medical provider as this is for educational purposes only. Um, okay, so as usual for 10 Minutes YouTube Tuesday, uh, our first tip is going to be for caregivers. And like I said, I've got, I've got a bunch of live trainings that I'm doing today um, for uh, my clients who are home care um, and assisted living owners, um, training their caregivers today. So um, I thought, like I said, I'd give you a little sneak preview of what some of that can be like and go over one of the tips that I'm going to share during um, uh, some of the live trainings that I do today. Um, so these are issues that often come up with caregivers. Um, some, anyone who has ever worked as a caregiver uh, or who has employed caregivers or, or who has been a caregiver, uh, family caregiver, whatever kind, knows that um, a lot of times the most intimidating transfers um, the most dangerous transfers can be those that occur in the bathroom. So, um, so I'm going to be focusing on that in some of the live trainings that I do today. We're going to be going over things like toileting transfers and how to manage clothing and how to manage um, hygiene after toileting. We're also going to be talking about shower transfers, things like that. Um, and since we have a really limited amount of time, though, for 10 Minute YouTube Tuesday, I thought that I would share with you um, one of the things that I'm going to talk, be talking about for shower transfers. Um, so, uh, so let's get right into it here. So what I have here is a pretty typical setup actually for a walk-in shower. And I, I want you, you can kind of just, just ignore this piece of equipment for right now because I'm just going to be talking about the setup of the shower. So many folks um who are they might be in a residential community they might be um aging in place at home many folks sort of make the assumption that having a walk-in shower um is going to make it so that they are safe no matter what to be able to uh, access their shower as they get older and of course unfortunately there can be a ton of things that can happen that can make this little teeny lip here a big, big barrier. And I know it's kind of hard to see because everything is white on white. So I'll sort of give you a little bit of contrast here. But this is about a five or six inch step into um, this walk-in shower. There are no grab bars in here, um, which is also unfortunately can be really typical. Um, uh, and this shower actually doesn't have even an easy way to mount grab bars. So this is a setup where the person really would need to be very safe to step over um, this lip to get into the shower. However, what often happens as people face different kinds of mobility issues, suddenly this, this little five to six inch lip, or it could be a two inch or a one inch step, pretty much any level of barrier at a certain point can make a shower totally inaccessible for some people. Um, so what we can do is what we can sometimes, uh, depending on the person, depending on the, the setup of the shower, uh, whether it's a shower curtain, etc. what we can do sometimes is we can use this piece of equipment that you've probably seen before. It's a pretty common piece of equipment. It's called a tub transfer bench. Um, and typically, it's called that because typically it's used for tub transfers, getting people in and out of uh, a shower tub combination where there's an actual tub that someone would have to step over, which is obviously a big barrier for a lot of folks. Um, but as I told, this little five or six inch step right here 
can ultimately become just as big a barrier for many, many people. So even though this is called a tub transfer bench, we can still use it, um, again, depending on the person, depending on the shower, depending on the situation, we can still often safely use this tub transfer bench to allow someone to safely get in and out of the shower without putting that person and without putting the caregiver at risk. Um, again, this is definitely a situation, anytime that you are thinking about specific equipment that may or may not work for a certain person that maybe you are taking care of, maybe that you are working with, um, it really is important to make sure that you are getting the right recommendation for that person um, from a uh, licensed therapist when at all possible. Usually an occupational therapist is gonna make a call like this. Um, so, you know, talking with someone's physician, uh, speaking with family members, et cetera, uh, advocating for that person to have an occupational therapist come out and do an assessment to make the um, correct recommendation for the correct piece of equipment can really, really, really uh, save a lot of time. It can save a lot of injuries. It can certainly make things safer and make things easier for everyone. But this is a pretty um, typical recommendation uh, that I have often made for, for clients where it's appropriate. Um, okay, so that is tip number one for caregivers for today. Um, as always, we have two tips on 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. And the second one is for caregiving organization. Um, okay, so here it is. Uh, this honestly seems, it, it's so fundamental. A lot of times the tips that I give for, for caregiving organizations, you know, it's about, you know, how do, how do you keep yourself motivated as a business owner? Because it's really hard. Um, how do you keep your organization functioning smoothly? Those kinds of things. Um, the most important thing for keeping your organization functioning functioning smoothly, if you're a caregiving organization, is making sure that you have great caregivers, right? Um, of course, that is sometimes easier said than it is done, but absolutely, fundamentally, foundationally, one of the most important things to making sure that you have great caregivers is making sure that your caregivers have great training. And that means that their training should be standardized so you know everyone's going to be doing things um, uh, following the same safety protocols the same methods their their training should be consistent um, it needs to occur frequently it can't occur just once at onboarding and every six months or, or once a year um, it really needs to be occurring on an ongoing basis to engage your caregivers in ongoing education and it needs to cover things that uh, go way beyond just the basics. Because the fact is, and we all know this, um, your caregivers see things that are more than basic all the time. They walk into situations that can be highly complex. And that is only going to continue um, to evolve. And, and those situations that they're walking into as non-skilled, non-medical caregivers are only going to continue to get more complex because the fact is people are living longer, they're being discharged from the hospital earlier, and they are living with more complex medical conditions. And we all know that non-medical caregivers play an absolutely foundational role in helping to care for folks who are complex, who are complicated. So their training needs to go beyond just having these really basic skills. So, you know, um, if you need assistance assessing your training program, if you uh, want help with your training pr program, then please, please reach out. I'd be happy to chat with you, have a discussion, see what things are looking like with your organization, and kind of help um, to figure out what your needs might be. Uh, you can reach out to me um, over Messenger on LinkedIn, you know, uh, uh, reply to this. I'd be happy to, or, you know, respond to this this post, I would be happy to chat with you any time um, and help you get your caregivers the training that they absolutely need. Okay, so those are my tips for 10 Minutes YouTube Tuesday. Couple of quick announcements. Um, I have a live event for family caregivers specifically because you know November is family caregiver month, y'all. Um, so I have a live event on Facebook tomorrow 
for um, family caregivers, really specifically talking about caring for folks with Parkinson's disease um, can be highly complex, uh, but there are definitely things that we can do to make this easier. So we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow live on Facebook. That is at noon Central Standard Time. Um, and then next week, week after this Thanksgiving week, happy Thanksgiving, by the way, y'all. Um, after Thanksgiving week, the, uh, the Friday, following Black Friday, um, I want to say it's December 3rd, um, that afternoon I'm also going, going to be doing a live discussion all about planning for um, how to care for a loved one. Uh, I'm going to have a great um, financial advisor who works specifically with people um, who are helping to plan financially to care for their loved ones, and we're going to have a discussion of some of the really practical matters that go into that. So definitely look out for um, more information about that um, to go ahead and sign up for that if it's something that you're interested in. Um, okay, I think that's it for me today, y'all. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was valuable to you. Um, and I wish you all a really, really wonderful, happy, healthy, safe Thanksgiving. All right, I'll see you next week. Bye, y'all.